We have on tap two ranked matchups in the SEC this weekend, but this is one that we don't see often. Number seven, Kentucky at 14th ranked Ole Miss, and the Cats have only won in Oxford twice in the series history, but UK has done a lot of just outright winning lately as they hold the second longest active win streak in FBS with eight straight dating back to last season. So let's dive a little bit deeper with our insiders, Josh Edwards from catspaws.com and David Johnson of Inside the Rebels. Saturday is the season debut of Chris Rodriguez as he missed the first four games due to a suspension. David, I know Ole Miss is dealing with their own situation at running back. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, Josh, how does C-Rod's return change things? Well, he should have a big impact on the game. I mean, Kentucky has always been known for its run game under head coach Mark Stoops, and simply this year it has been unavailable. Uh, they've turned to Cavassier Smoke, Jatan McLean, and a number of other backs, but they just haven't been able to provide the physical play style of Chris Rodriguez. Uh, this is a guy that had about 1,400 rushing yards last year, nine touchdowns. Uh, to say that he will be a big addition to this Kentucky offense would be an understatement because they have failed to really establish the ground game. And part of that is because of the offensive line play, uh, which has been consistently shaky through the early parts of the season. But having Rodriguez back allows Kentucky to bring a little bit more of that physical element and maybe, just maybe, be able to ground out a victory if they're in a position late in this game. Ole Miss leads the SEC in rushing yards at over 280 per game. They rank fourth in the nation. In, in rushing yards. But against Kentucky, it's all about who's going to be available in that backfield. Zach Evans, very questionable. Ulysses Bentley will be out. It looks as if the load is going to fall on true freshman Quinshawn Judkins. Now, Judkins certainly has proven through the first four games that he's more than capable. He is the reigning co-freshman of the week in the SEC this week. So, that's uh, that's what Ole Miss is trying to do. I think they're going to go. They're going to try to set the run, establish a ground game, and throw the ball when they want to throw the ball, not necessarily when they have to throw the ball. Well, to say the Rebels haven't been tested yet this season is kind of putting it mildly. None of Ole Miss's previous opponents have a win over a Power 5 team. That's nuts. So a top 10 Kentucky is without a doubt their toughest test thus far. And the toughest for Jackson Dart. He hasn't faced a defense like the one he'll see Saturday. So, David, how does he handle it? Yeah, that's yet to be seen. Um, you're exactly right. I mean, Ole Miss played the whole month of September against uh, Cupcakes, if you will. And uh, to tell you the truth, we don't know. We don't know how Jackson Dart is going to perform against an SEC defense. And Ole Miss has thrown the ball when it wants to throw the ball, not when it has to throw the ball. If Kentucky is able to force Ole Miss into some situations where it's third and long and the game is basically on the shoulders of Jackson Dart, then, uh, you know, we're going to find out. We're going to find out if he's ready for the SEC. But right now, anybody that says they know the answer to that, I don't think they do because uh, we haven't seen him against an SEC defense yet. Yeah, and then, you know, as far as Kentucky is concerned, the X factor on this defense has to be just making tackles. Uh, Ole Miss is a team that has run play action on 24.3% of their plays. Uh, they've run motion on 19.9% of their plays. This is a team that likes to get you moving sideline to sideline and forcing you to communicate on defense. Uh, Kentucky has to be communicating or they are simply not going to be in position to make plays on this Ole Miss offense. Um, they've had 79 tackles avoided this year, which is fourth most uh, across college football. So to say that Kentucky um, has to simply make tackles to get Ole Miss to the ground and kind of get them in down, uh, down in distance positions uh, is very important to this game. Kentucky against Florida, the defense was fantastic last week. Against Northern Illinois, they struggled. So this has to be another statement game from Kentucky's defense uh, if they hope to pull out a victory. I certainly assume the Cats will deliver dart with some welcome to the SEC moments. Well, finally, with weaker competition also brings in an apathetic fan support, but Lane Kiffin went as far as to say this. You know, when you come back out and you run out the tunnel and it looks like 
you know, a high school game um, playing in a college stadium, you can't let that affect you. I mean, you know, there's psychology to that, obviously. There's a home field advantage for a reason. And, you know, when it goes the other way, you kind of have that feeling, you know, that, man, are we still really playing in a game here? You know, the players have to fight that. So, again, we use that as a learning lesson for our guys. So, if that's the case, that's the case. But, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm, I'm worried about what I can control. I, I've tried social media in here for two years. So, you know, we'll worry about what we can control, and that's getting our players ready to play. We know he has tried on social media, but with a big time opponent coming into Oxford, David, how important is it that fans hear Kiffin's message and fill Vot Hemingway Saturday? Yeah, just win, baby. I mean, that, that's kind of the mantra right there. If you win, they will come. Ole Miss has won. The problem is we're in the TV era of college football where fans have realized, partly due to COVID back in 2020, that you know, they can stay home, hassle-free, watch the game, eat their nachos, go to their own bathroom, and that makes a difference. But I will say this, now that SEC play has begun, I don't think Lane's going to gripe too much more about the fan support. Uh, it's there. It just hasn't been there to watch Tulsa, Central Arkansas, and Troy. It will be there Saturday. I expect Vaughn Hemingway to be sold out. Uh, plenty of red, blue in the stands. Well, no matter the environment, it's no secret that Will Levis has not performed as well on the road compared to home. So, Josh, what needs to happen for him to have more success away from Lexington? Well, yeah, I mean, the numbers don't stack up to what he has done at home. But I will say that Levis looked locked in against that Florida team. I think he was a big part of why they were able to achieve victory down there in Gainesville. But uh, this is a guy that's not going to be rattled. I mean, he's going to go into a hostile environment. Uh, looking to prove all the doubters wrong. So I think if he stays within structure, kind of takes what Ole Miss's defense gives to him, um, I think he's going to be, you know, fantastic once again on Saturday. Now there are there are some other contributing factors uh, to his success. The offensive line has to be more stable. Um, Chris Rodriguez has to pick up where he left off. I think if Kentucky's offense gels for the first time this year, um, they should be able to come away with a victory on Saturday. We will certainly wait and see. Guys, thank you so much for all your great insight. Don't forget, catspaws.com and Inside the Rebels is your place to be for the best insight on these teams all season long. And later, our betting expert will give you his pick on this game and much more.